Hello, good day, my glorious families. I welcome you to today's chapter of the day. <laughs> so today's chapter is in the book of Job, chapter 14. And I, before then, I want to say happy Mother's Day to everyone. Today is Mother's Day. I said, God bless everyone. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Every mother, everyone that is willing to be a mom, every female that is still going to become a mother, I want to say God bless you in advance. Happy Mother's Day. You will not uh, work in vain. You will not labor in vain. Whatever your hands have been, your heart has been wishing for, for good, the Lord will give unto you. If you're a single sister or a single brother and you've been, you've been admiring marriages, good marriages, godly homes, the Lord will give it to you. This Mother's Day, because you wish to be a parent someday, because you wish to mother or father those children that are still in heaven waiting to be called home, you know, because this is home too. God will bless you. God will give you your desires. God will keep your marriage. God will give you the good partners that you desire. Every mother watching me now, if you don't have a, a good marriage, the Lord will bless you with a good man. And I pray all will be well with all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's mother, let, let's not celebrate and forget to, <laughs> to do today's uh, chapter. So let's do today's chapter because I am in the mood for Mother's Day. It's a mothering Sunday. <laughs> so Remember where we stopped last yesterday? We stopped at uh, Job 13 when Job was replying to his friend. Um, the one that spoke last was a, um, he was a, a sofa, Z O P H A R. Because when I pronounce it, my my auto caption is not captioning the proper uh, the proper uh, spelling. So, anyways. Um, you know, what I grabbed in that chapter 13 was that Job was not interested in addressing any of them because he believes whatever that happened to him, none of them understands. He had, he was telling them, well, whatever we want to say, because they are trying to castigate him and make him, he, they believe he's trying to be, to act like holy, holy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, you got a bomb. Okay, tell people to come and meet him. Hurry, hurry, shut the door and tell people to come and make, meet him. To come and pick him. So anyway, um, you know, it was um so it was like I have words with my almighty God, not you. And I think that's what we should we should emulate that that he, he desires to talk to God directly. He doesn't want to speak to them because of course none of them have ever found themselves in his shoes. They don't know why it's pinches. So he is the one who is experiencing whatever that is going on right now. So there is nothing the friends will say that will suit him. You know, except the ones that would just encourage him and make him um, sympathize. They were not actually sympathizing. They were just, they were trying to challenge him based on what he was talking about, based on his pain, the way he was pouring out his pain. They were not pleased with that. But that's that's their business, really, because he's the one who knows who is wearing the shoes and know where it's pinches. So let's quickly run to chapter 14. A mortar. Book of favor. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. I'm on video. Call favor to attend to him. I'm coming. A mortar. Shut the door. A mortar born of woman. Few of days and full of trouble. This is Job still talking. Comes up like a flower and withers. Flees like a shadow and does not last. Mm. That's a mortar. We are all mortar. And this part is what we really need to pay attention to. Maybe I should read it again. He said, a mortar born of woman, few of days and full of trouble. Comes up like a flower and withers. Flees like a shadow and does not last. Do you fix your eyes on such a, such a one? Do you bring me into judgment with you? Now he's challenging God. That's, a, that's where he's, uh, the chapter 13 stops and it continues in 14. He was talking to God like, he told his friends, I don't have words with you. And that's fact. He doesn't have words with them because they don't understand. They don't know. They don't understand what is going on. So he said he has words with the Almighty. And now he's talking to the Almighty. So, but I, what I wanted to take out of here is the fact that we are mortal. So he's describing us. <laughs> he's trying to tell God, you are God. You are not human. Are you trying to fight me? Are you trying to bring yourself 
to fight, like bring yourself solo to fight me, me that I'm just a mortar. I, I'm, I'm a mortar, I can, anything can just happen to mortar. Mortar can wither just like that, like flower or breeze will just blow them off. So I'm mortar, why would you, the almighty God, try to be fighting me up to be paying so much attention, you know, to my iniquities? Well, little did Job know, it wasn't God that was fighting him. We all know the story. God was not the one fighting him. It was the it was Satan that said, God, permit me to deal with your son. But God permitted it in order to put Job's faith to test. And that is the essence of this book of Job. If anything happens, just trust me, God is not the one inflicting pain on you. God is not the one trying to make life miserable for you. Even though Job, God permitted the, uh, Satan to touch Job, to tamper with Job's health, Job's possessions, Job's children. God was expecting one thing from Job. Fine, his faith. Fine, he didn't lose his faith. So God was right that touch him, but he's my son. I know he will not deny me. He won't curse me. So he didn't curse God. He cursed himself. He didn't lose his faith. So God was right. But he cursed himself. And then there was one thing God was expecting from him. To curse Satan, to, to rebuke Satan. But that was what he didn't do. So, and that is the whole essence of the Bible. All these stories are meant for us to learn from. So that when unpleasant things happen around us or to us sometimes, because life is like this, up and down. When things we are not expected happen, what do we do? We curse Satan out. We call him by his name. We rebuke him. We have some places in the Bible where we can rebuke Satan. We rebuke him with the word of God because it is sharper than two edges sword. We rebuke him and then we now command what we want. But let's not forget, give thanks to God. When you give thanks, you know what happens. The, 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 Satan feels like it's as if you're killing him. Oh, I don't want to use the word kill. Like it's as if you're, 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 you're hurting him. When you give praises to God, when things are not fine. So let's continue. He says, who can bring clean? He said, do you fix your eyes on such, such a one? Do you bring me into judgment with you? How, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one can. Since their days are determined and the number of their months is known to you. And you have, appoint, you have appointed the bonds, the bonds that they cannot pass. Look away from them and desist that they may enjoy like laborers in like laborers their days for there is no for there is hope for a tree if it is cut down that will sprout again there is hope for a tree that if it's cut down it will sprout again and it says and that and that its root will not cease though is though its root grows old in the earth and its stone dies in the ground you are the scent of water, it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant. But mortars die and are laid low. Humans aspire. <laughs> are we learning? And where are they? As waters fail from a lake and a river wastes away and dries up, as mortars lie down and do not rise again. Until the heavens are no more, they will not awake and be roused out of their sleep oh that thou would hide me in shell shell that you will conceal me until your wrath is past you know despite all this job was just fearful like god just keep me somewhere stop punishing me i'm done keep me somewhere hide your hide your face like if you're hungry with me just stay away from me for now when you're okay please come back job was that such of a pleasant fellow. What a what what a good hearted fellow who believes God dealt with him, God took all his possession, and yet he still acknowledges the mighty hands of God. He said that you will appoint me set time and remember me. If mortars die, will they live again? Die once they're gone, they're gone. They are not like the tree that if you cut them down, as long as the root is still there, they will still sprout again. He said, 
all the all the days of my service i will wait until my release should come father release me don't kill me <laughs> he said you will call and i would answer you you would long for the work of your hands for then you would not number my steps you would not keep watch over my sin my transgression will be sealed up in a bag and you will you would cover over my iniquity but the mountain falls and crumbles away and the rock is removed from its place the waters wear away the stones the te torrents wash away the soil of the earth so you destroy the hope of mortals you prevail over against them and they pass away you change their countenance and send them away their children come to honor and they do not know, know it they are brought low and it goes unnoticed. They feel only the pain. They feel only the pain of their own bodies and mourn only for themselves. Guess what? In chapter 15, Eliva speaks. Eliva speaks again. What do you think Eliva is Eliva Elifas is going to say this time? I will see you guys. I will see you folks. I will see you, my people, my glorious families. Again, in another chapter. Love you all. Bye. We had a glorious generation for me.